They may look menacing, but with a little guidance from professional handlers, you just may gather the courage to take one of the century-old crocodiles at Kachikali Crocodile Pond for a little walk. <laughs> some of them will be even touching, crying, but some will be touching with, you know, happiness and joy. They, they won't even believe that they're touching a crocodile. Yeah. It's what makes Kachikali one of the top tourist attractions in Gambia's capital, Banjul. But these days, the crocodile pond is quiet. Everything went... <laughs> so is the monkey park. Banjul's beaches are deserted, hotels are mostly vacant, and souvenir stores are empty. It all began when former leader Yahya Jame refused to give up power after he lost the presidential election in December. That led to a state of emergency in political turmoil that forced thousands of tourists to rush back home. It seems that the entire world was coming to an end. Abduli Haidara, head of the tourism board, says Gambia averages around 4,000 tourists a week during its peak month of January. Almost all of them evacuated within days. That was the beginning of the nightmare that we went through. To this day, a tourism industry that generates 20% of the government's revenue is still suffering. But with new president Adam Abaro's peaceful return from exile, tourism is starting its comeback. Right now is the perfect opportunity for us. The tourism board plans to ask the new government for an increase in advertising money to help convince travelers why they should come back to Gambia's pristine beaches, nature reserves, and exotic tourist attractions. Gambia's tourist attractions are certainly fun, but many say Gambia's best feature are its people, some of the most hospitable, most fun-loving people you'll ever meet. I think, I think it's the way we are brought up. It's why Gambia is called the smiling coast of West Africa. There is no country on earth that is so peaceful. So peaceful, even the crocodiles seem friendly. Reza Seya Al Jazeera, Banjul, Gambia.